AITV4 Island News special presentation. The winner of American Idol, Ian Tongi! Being on the idol stage, so amazing to be up there. You just close your eyes, get into the moment, and you just go off. and respecting the Leo and their input as we reciprocate love back to them. So the baby makes some noise for the Dummy family nice and loud. I think his name says it all, you know? It's like he was born it. I am the next American Idol. See everyone do this is nuts, dude. I, I like never, never expect that it will be like this. Big celebration on Oahu's North Shore. All of this to honor our hometown hero, Iom Tongi. It's like we're winning the state championship again. I mean, this is huge. I mean, he is an ambassador of Hawaii, but he's an ambassador from this village. We love this boy. Iom Tongi. That name has become popular in just the last few months, from Hawaii to Hollywood to the rest of the world. He's our newest American Idol. But there's so much more to this island boy. This is I Am Iam, in his own words, and in the eyes of his loved ones. Over the next hour, we'll take an in-depth look at Iam's success on American Idol, his quick rise to fame and becoming a fan favorite, and some of the challenges that he faced along the way that many don't know about. We'll also talk to the people who helped shape and raise him. And in order to really understand his success, you have to understand his history and his background that all started right here in Kahuku. It's just so amazing to be up there with the lights and you just close your eyes, get into the moment, and you just, you know, just go off, yeah. At just 18 years old, Kahuku's own Iam Tongi is a global icon. I'll tell you I love you once more. Ian's American Idol audition went viral after he sang the song Monsters by James Blunt and revealed his heartbreak over the recent death of his father, Rodney. Wow. And your dad? Uh, my dad uh, passed away like a um, couple of months ago. Mm, sorry, buddy. Well, so sorry. Who, who, got, who got you into music? My dad. So we wanted to take a moment of silence. Ian's connection to the song Monsters first started with his uncle. They were riding home one time and my brother was playing the song and that's when he listened to it and he actually cried and he really wanted to perform that song. So he learned it and he came home, he performed it for his dad. And he, you know, like for me that was, that has been one of my favorite songs. Ian's mother Lily is the one who suggested Ian sing Monsters for his audition. I told him, why don't you do monsters? And he's like, no, I don't want to sing monsters. I don't want to be sad. I don't want to do it. Uh, he specifically mentioned he didn't want to talk about Rodney. You know, like he said, I don't want to be a sob story. So he performed uh, with uh, Give You Blue by, you know, Alan Stone. And then one of the producers um, just said, you know, Give You Blue is good. But, you know, with a voice like yours, It'll be nice to sing something that, you know, is different. So what are some of the covers that you might think? And he looked at me and I just, I just looked at him. I didn't even have to say anything. And then he's like, okay. And he had this face like, how about monsters? Ian's audition struck a chord with people from around the world. So I'll leave the outcome. Let there be no more darkness. Becoming the most viewed audition on American Idol's YouTube page with more than 18 million views. I was just trying to stop myself from crying. But once when I started singing, I don't know why, like, 
I just started thinking about my dad and like I could hear his uh, harmonies, you know what I mean? Ian turned his heartbreak into triumph. He's this boy from a small little island making a big difference, making a name for himself, following his dreams, continuing his dad's legacy. I mean, when you see their stories, you know, on in front of the world, it's, it's uh, very emotional. There's a magic around him, and it happens in your career maybe once or twice when you are out there where this is your time, it's your moment, and that's where he is right now. The pride is always there, no matter who it is. You know, we're always support our community and whoever comes out of our community, you know, big or small, we're always there. A teenager coping with the loss of his dad taking a leap of faith to pursue his dreams and going on to win American Idol. Coming up, we'll get a glimpse of Ian's upbringing and who he credits for getting him into music. <laughs> September 1st, 2004, a star was born on the North Shore of Oahu. My name is Ian Tongi and I'm from Kahuku, Hawaii. The youngest of five, Ian's passion for music started at a young age. He um, was always a singer. Like we used to tease him as a bathroom singer, you know, in the shower, everywhere. He'll sit there, play games, sing. We're watching movies, he's singing. It's like more like annoying kind singing. <laughs> Like just always singing and we would always be like stop so we kind of were pushing him to stop not knowing that you know he was destined to sing i was a bubble kid growing up out of all of us siblings he's always been the one who is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who we all thought would be that person that everyone knows, that everyone loves. Put your hand down. <laughs> I used to do wrestling because all my siblings did wrestling and football and all that stuff. And I started getting into it, but my grades sucked, so I couldn't do any like tournaments. It wasn't till uh, fifth grade when he started going to school and his teacher, um, Alison Faleolo, like, taught the whole class ukulele. And that's when he kind of picked it up. My first year of teaching, Ian was one of my students. And um, he uh, was a typical student. Always very happy, but struggled with academics. No, I wasn't good at all. I was, everyone else was getting it like faster than me. And I was like, I don't want to do it, you know? Ian has Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD. But growing up, it was way worse, and um, I used to get in trouble a lot. I would get calls from the office or from his teachers that he would be in school without a backpack, no pencil, nothing to write with, but he would always have his guitar. He left uh, my classroom crying a lot every day because I would scold him for needing to try harder and things like that, but uh, just always came back to school the next day. I was so proud of him for doing that. With Miss Faliolo's encouragement, playing the ukulele eventually became second nature. You know, I grew to love it, and uh, I did my first talent show in fifth grade with the ukulele, and I sang Words of Love. <laughs> Partway into the year, he began finding videos online. And so over the weekend, um, to encourage him with academics, I'd send a ukulele home with him until he got his own. And he would come back playing a new song because he had seen it online. And when my husband found out he knew how to play the ukulele, he, then that was around November. He bought, he went right away and bought him, you know, an expensive guitar, uh, ukulele, and he brought it home and he hid it under our bed for his Christmas present. 
So we waited till Christmas to give it to him. But yeah, that's when we first started with him kind of, you know, singing with Rodney a lot. And it, it lit him up that Ian was always so happy because Ooh, now there's something dad's proud of because we were like, ah, be quiet, you know. But it's more like, oh, Ian, come sing, Ian, come sing. Ian's dad eventually bought him a cheap guitar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think it was $99. And he's like, I want to see if you're serious about this. And if you, if you are serious, I'm going to get you a better one. Once Ian proved his passion was serious, Rodney used his holiday paycheck to buy Ian this guitar. You know, I was kind of upset and he said, why are you upset? I'm investing in, in Ian. This is Ian's future. And I'd be like, whatever, but you don't have to, you know, we got bills to pay. And I would stress out and he'd be like, you stress too much. You know, we have to invest in the, in the kids. And I'm like, yes, but you can invest in like a guitar that's 99 bucks he's like you want them to feel like they are worth something so you we have to you know spend that much money on it I'm, like, nope, I'm gonna set him up i'm gonna make sure that he has you know gigs to go and do and he did rodney got em his first job performing weekends at mike's huli chicken in kahuku Mike would always come and tip me like twenty, forty dollars and I would like, hey, thank you, Mike. My dad would always push him every morning. You know, he'd wake up he would wake him up. And every day, like at night he'd be like, Ian, did you practice your music? He'd be like, Oh, hurry up, practice. I need you to learn um he'd tell him like, Oh, I need you to learn like eleven new songs this week. I'm like and Ian would be so mad. All that practice paid off. But just as Hawaii was starting to get a glimpse of Ian's talent, reality set in. So ahead, we'll hear more from the Tongis about why they were left with no choice but to pick up and leave Hawaii. Paycheck. In 2017, Rodney got sick, suffered a stroke, and for about a year had to stop his work as an electrician. We were drained financially, and then he ended up going back to work and got dehydrated and had a heart attack. So right after that, um, we knew that we couldn't afford Hawaii anymore. Priced out of paradise. We had to go. We had no choice. Really. In 2019, the Tongis moved to Federal Way, Washington, just over 20 miles south of Seattle, to live with Rodney's sister, Lupepe. It was such a blessing for me. I always wanted one of my siblings here with me. It was hard. I miss my friends a lot. I remember sometimes I'd cry to my mom, like, why do we have to move? I didn't have no, I have no friends. Washington is different. It was more like you stay indoors, like you don't really go. You know, in Hawaii, yeah, I'm like, I miss walking, just walking in the streets and just meeting my friends anywhere and just walk. Now it's like just sitting in the house. You know Hawaii, you wave at everyone, everyone waves back, and but it's usually in Seattle, like people would ask just random people, and they look at me like I'm waiting to be like. And they would just ignore me. In 2020, Rodney suffered kidney failure and went on dialysis. 
I used to think, oh, you know, nothing's gonna happen to mom and dad because they're gonna live forever. That's when I realized, like, yo, it's not gonna, they're not gonna live forever. After Rodney got sick, Ian developed anxiety and had his first anxiety attack at the age of 16. I don't feel like, like, like my heart starts racing and I don't know what to do. I can, he just sat there on the bed and he just seemed like he was hyperventilating. And he, I can't breathe, I can't, you know, like. Rodney skipped his dialysis that day to be with his son. Ian remembers a conversation he had with his dad about the struggles he was feeling inside. Tough, you know, he's a tough love kind of guy. And that day, where he took me out and uh, he just, uh, like, said, son, it's okay, you know what I mean? It's okay to feel that way. And That was the first time EM opened up about the anxiety to his dad. And he was shocked, I guess he was, he didn't expect um, to hear from his dad that, you know, it's okay. Like, we've all kind of felt some kind of anxiety at some point. What people don't see from the young man who thrives performing in front of thousands of people is a fear that he has of ending up alone. He likes to talk about, you know, things with me, and he talked about the fear of um, being alone, fear of me not coming home. I mean, I'm glad that he likes, or not likes, but I, I'm glad that he trusts me and he's able to talk about it. And I encourage him to share it with others too, because personally, I feel like the more he talks about it, the more he'll get out, you know, instead of carrying that burden with him. But, you know, that fear of just being alone, and he's had like a couple of anxiety attacks that, um, I want to be there for him, and I want to make sure that he knows that he can go in and come back and I'm here. Lily hopes Ian's honesty about his fear of being alone can help others realize they're not alone, whatever challenges they may be facing. The following year, in December of 2021, Rodney passed away. It was um, unexpected when it seemed like something so small, and it... It was a shock, and I think Ian took it really hard, especially that they went home. Ian wasn't there in Washington when his dad died. He had come to Hawaii for Christmas. Uh, Ian broke down. And right after crying for so long, he went into my sister's room, who was dying of cancer, and just played music because he knew that's what his dad wanted. I simply wish for one more day with you. When he passed away, Ian just seemed like he didn't want to do anything at all. Like, he didn't want to go to school. He didn't want to go to seminary. He didn't want to go to church. He didn't want, like, everything just seemed like he didn't want to do anything. After he passed, uh, William didn't want to sing anymore. So there was no music at the house for a long time. Ian didn't even want to sing at his dad's funeral. He just said he can't. He just can't do it. And when I asked him why, and he said, I, every time I sing, I hear dad back me up. I could hear, you know, I could hear his voice. And it just makes me miss him even more. So I don't want to sing. Be me wishing still for one more day. After his dad passed away, singing didn't come easy to Ian anymore. He used to not be able to to sleep uh, without music. So he used to always start with his only his dad's music. Once he sleeps, I turn off the music. It doesn't bother him anymore. Like he still needs it to sleep, but as soon as he falls asleep and I turn it off, he's, he's fine. He'll wake up in the morning and he's happy. Like I feel like little things like that makes me happy. 
to see him now, I mean, see him back then and see him now, it's like, it seems like he says he still hears his dad, but he says it like in a happy, like, tone. But the past few months haven't come easy. My immune system is weak, I meant. And uh, he said that's why you get sick easily and that's why you get uh, nasal infections fast. Ian got strep throat right before coming to Oahu for his top 26 performance. Well, we're going home and we're going to have our uh, little thing. We're going to do some. On the show, my voice was gone. I couldn't even talk. But when I talk, it was like, like that. Now, one of the PAs kept giving me, uh, she like was helping me out. She got me honey. And just before the thing, I was just sucking honey the whole time on the packet. And right when I got there, I was like, I was like, man, I don't think I'm going to be able to say this. I was like, I got still into that. I was like, oh, shoot, it's good. Dude, I was like, yo, I'm ready, dog. Now that Ian's been thrown into the spotlight, it's not easy for anyone, let alone an 18 year old. Little bit make some noise for Ian Thongy one time, please. I've talked about this with Ian a lot. Like, our fears of, you know, him allowing peer pressure to um, take over and talking to him about, you know, staying true to himself. I still have that fear that with time, he might change. I'm hoping he won't. I'm hoping he'll still keep that, you know, like, EM factor to him. That I'm just going to do EM. And I think one of the biggest things that he always talks about, too, is his dad tell, you know, telling him that his music is not for everyone and realizing that it's okay for people not to like your music. Although he's been on the road for the past two months, Iam remains rooted. <laughs> Never forgetting where he comes from. Of course, it doesn't feel like home to me, but, you know, um, Seattle and Hawaii for sure feel like home to me. Between visiting family, performances, and special occasions, Iam visits Hawaii about every other month. After making it to the top three on American Idol, show producers asked him where he'd like to film his hometown segment. And without hesitation, Ian chose Hawaii. I can't even tell you how proud Hawaii is. I mean, you already know, but what are you looking forward to the most about coming home this week? I'm looking forward to uh, eating and, uh, you know, the food in Hawaii, best food you'll ever have in your life. Whenever he visits home, he stops by his favorite spot for Kelby. I remember him with his guitar sitting right here on this bench, you know, just having a little jam session before before he goes to school. It feels great to be home and uh, be with uh, uh, my mom and going back to see my family and friends. But I never expect this. And I don't know. I, I just don't know what to say. Uh, oh, thank you. Ian received an honorary diploma from Kuhuku High School, where he would have been a member of the senior class of 2023. Seeing him on TV is like, wow. Growing up thinking about this our whole life. Just the talks every time, so you know we go hang out. It's the first thing like, oh, you know, say you have some episodes, something like that. And like, oh yeah, we start talking about it. Oh, oh, before they turn off the lights. When Ian started to go, like everyone saw him on TV, we were all just so excited because this is the first time in a while that someone from what you, especially someone from this side of the island, was like joining into something more bigger. A long, long time ago. This is how Hawaii does it. This is how the North Shore does it. For our championship, for EM, for everybody, we support all of our kids, and we know they can go high. Now the rest of the world knows that Hawaii can put out talent. Still ahead, we'll head to Washington State to visit EM's family and drop in and visit the school he goes to now. <laughs>
brings pride not only to Hawaii, but also to Federal Way, Washington, home to about 100,000 people. He attends Decatur High School. This is where Ian sits um, uh, when he's here. Uh, this is his desk and his chair area. Um, it's specifically set up over here because he likes he likes to be in the front. Man, I thought you know, is school is not the same. So that every time, every day of school, it's always Ian um, serenading everybody in the morning. Like he's just he's just walking to the to a different class. He's going to a class. He's over there singing. But I will travel the world to be right by your side. Music is always at the front of his mind. Like literally, we'll be working on something and um, something will pop into his head and he's like, oh, I need to break real quick. And then he'll sit down and just like pound something out on paper. And then when you ask him what it is, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a song he's working on. There are about 1,700 students that go to Decatur High School. You'd be hard pressed to find a student who doesn't know who Ian is. Man, he was just next to me in class and now he's up there and he's doing big things. So it's, it's kind of good like seeing one of us up on top. Ian's friends are still adjusting to all of his success. People offer them money to set up meetings with Ian or even just to get a picture with him. A lot of people, like, they look at it as a way of, to get clout. People call it uh, clout chasing. But like the way I look at it, I don't look at Ian like a, a celebrity or anybody that's like famous. No, Tom is just like a brother to me. Besides filling his school with song, cheer, and pride, Ian's an inspiration to his fellow classmates and teachers. He's chasing his dream, and I support him 100% in that. There's not a lot of people that get that opportunity to do that. You get to see someone put into action these things that you were constantly telling kids, like, hey, man, you have to dream bigger. You have to, like, you're more than this, you're more than that, you're more than, like, whatever your circumstances. And to see him take that shot and to, like, dream is big, bigger than probably he ever even imagined. A short drive from the school is the neighborhood where Ian lives today, a quiet town where beautiful trees line the street. The house feels pretty empty. Um, he makes a lot of noise. <laughs> In his home, one of the first things that catches your eye is Ian's golden ticket that sits prominently displayed on the living room mantle. You'll also find his three dogs, Coco, Thor, and Bubbles. Ian's support system spans far and wide. We have a lot of family here, Tongans and Samoans, but especially Tongans. Washington is also where Ian's dad, Rodney, is buried, at the Bonnie Watson Memorial Cemetery. We visited with Ian's family and friends at Rodney's grave, where they honored his memory with stories and songs. Seeing her son's potential, Lily signed Ian up two years ago for American Idol season 20. I think he went two rounds online and then he got cut and he's like, ah, I told you, you know, and then he got mad. When I first tried out, uh, I made it past the first online round before you go to the auditions. And my dad was going out and telling everyone, you know what I mean? Then I tried out again and I never made it. And, you know, I felt like almost like I kind of disappointed him. But mom wasn't ready to give up on Ian and Rodney's dream. Once again, signing Ian up to give it another go on American Idol. I didn't tell him, so I just signed up. And he, he said, why would you do that? I'm like, dad has been pushing you, you know. Wouldn't you want to, like, continue with what you've been working on? And he's like, Mom, I'm not good enough. Everything was, I'm not good enough. I think he didn't want to get cut again. Although EM was hesitant to sing Monsters in that first audition, it put him on the map. It's my turn to take some monsters away. The producer's like, it's not a sob story. If we didn't know about it until just, you know, now. And he didn't talk about it until the producer said, I saw you just recently lost your father and he was quiet for a while. You know, and he's like, I don't want to be a sob story. And she's like, it's not a sob story. You've come like three rounds online without us knowing anything. So that's obviously talent. And she mentioned like, well, wouldn't you want, you know, people to know who inspired you? And I think that's what changed him. And although Rodney wasn't alive to see EM's success, he's a big part of the reason for it. He kind of took like a different approach from the first time I signed him up. And then when he kind of made it through and he's like, I didn't think I would make it through. And I'm like, EM, you've been saying that you're doing it for dad. 
But if you're not going to do it for yourself, you're not going to go very far. You have to, like, do it for both of you. You know, take that along for the ride, but it's yours. Little did him know, it would be the ride of his life. Coming up, we'll hear from members of Hawaii's music industry and hear how they feel about Ian's journey and his win. For the last couple of months, Hollywood has been home for Ian and his mom, Lily, who have been living out of their hotel room. You can feel the strong bonds that the contestants have developed with each other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, can I get a yes, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, it's not Zach. Oh, it's not Even their families get along. Hey, my older son said he voted half for EM and half for Zachariah. And he's like, what was your first Wow, well, you're my brother and you did that? <laughs> I think you were... It feels like work or like, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, or school. It just feels like... But you're having more fun, like... Okay, yeah, that's not work or school. But, you know, yeah. Well, we're you and you win. You're so great. <laughs> we step out on the Hollywood Boulevard, and Ian can barely walk a block without being recognized by fans. You just see a bunch of people, like, right when Ian leaves, they rush him, and his security guy, like, oh, get away, get away. It's, it's not bad. Like, I just love and, like, enjoy meeting new people and... You know, just uh, talking, because I like to talk a lot. He is very out there, outgoing, recharges his social battery with other people. It's, he loves being with people. The siblings, they're like, oh, wow, now we're known as Ian's brother. Ian was always kind of like just hanging around mom and like everybody. Like, oh, I didn't know that you had another brother. Are you Levi's brother? Are you Lecky's brother? So everything, was, he was, you know, somebody else's brother. And I'm like, oh, how does it feel now that you're, you know, Ian's brother? In our business, you know, it's instant identity is what I'm looking for. What's that connective connectivity where people can actually say, oh my God, I love that kid. Ian's got newfound celebrity status. He is so wildly talented, and it's been such an incredible journey seeing his confidence grow. Still, he remains humble. A quality his mom and dad instilled in him. Some of the lectures he would give the kids all the time, even with sports, when they became big at one point in Hawaii, and then he's like, you know, you need to stay humble. Once you get it to your head, it's gonna mess with everything. So I know he would have said this exact same thing to him. Around Ian's neck, a reminder of that advice. He keeps his dad's wedding ring close to his heart, along with a picture of his parents made for him by a fan. Back home in Hawaii, he's being welcomed with open arms into the island's music community. Hawaii, we come together strong for Ian. video for him and we're supporting him and the reason why is because what's a rising tide lifts all boats like it's really what's good for him is good for us it's good for Hawaii it's good for Polynesia it's good for humanity like Jack Johnson sang like one of my favorite songs we're so much better when we're together I'm so proud to bring out Ian Tongi there's a lot of people who can sing really well and they they technically sing great then there's other people that just have a tenor and a tone to their voice that's magical, and that's what Ian's got. I can't really explain it. I have no. It's magic. You can't explain magic, and that's what he has. It's, it's really funny because like now we're all starstruck. I told my friends like the other night, my phone started ringing, and I was like, "Is Ian Tongi right here calling me?" And uh, everybody was laughing. To see Ian be able to like hang with Jack and like hear Jack's excitement and like you know how Jack was like pretty much fangirling over Ian. Hey Ian, you make me look real cool to my kids right now. <laughs> from the mountain to the Fourteen thousand people turned out for Ian's homecoming concert at Turtle Bay Resort. From finding funding to a venue, the community worked around the clock with just over a week's notice to put together the epic celebration. Just the fact that he is here and he made it on the show itself, you know what I mean? And and 
and the, what everything he's representing is beautiful and represents Austin. It makes Hawaii look amazing, and he's the ambassador of Aloha Spirit right now. That's something to be said about that, about the strength of our community when we come together as one in support of a common goal. We can make anything happen. Holy moly! like watching him about to take the stage and then all you hear is Seacrest, Ryan Seacrest say, uh, he's gonna cool down for you guys. Um, I lost it. I, lo I lost it. And what advice about instant stardom with local music industry veterans give to their new young colleague? I would just say don't take things so seriously. You're a kid. Enjoy that. Enjoy that time being young and don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how you learn in your life, you know, but... 100% trust your not all, trust your intuition. Hold me closer and I feel no pain every beat of my heart. That is your kupuna speaking to you directly. Your kupuna, your guardian angels, your dad. Coming up, we'll take a look at Ian's monumental victory and what he sees as he's facing his future. Idol, viewers vote for their favorite singer and sometimes... Favorite doesn't always equal family. Case in point, the mother of Zachariah Smith, a fellow American Idol finalist and friend of Eam's. We love Eam. Uh, my husband loves Eam. We've loved him from day one. We know he'll get number one, but I would like to see Zachariah get number three so he can go to his hometown and do hometown week. We know who's going to get number one, and that's perfectly fine. The winner of American Idol. 2023 is Ian Tongi. Oh, a proud day for Hawaii. On May 21st, 2023, Ian made history as the first person from Hawaii and first Pacific Islander to win American Idol. It feels crazy and it feels unreal and I you know, just love everyone. Coming full circle, Ian once again sang Monsters, this time alongside James Blunt during the finale. I know he wears his heart on his sleeve and, and I felt just very lucky to be up there with him. Ian's now ready for the next step of his career. For sure, I'm going to be doing live shows, you know, concerts and stuff, and yeah, because I love performing live. Hi, man. You did it. Yay, he's got the ribs. Oh. Hey, that stands for charisma. He's taught us all that. Before, I was so nervous to perform live, but being on the idol stage, it's just so amazing to be up there. It's just a matter now of management. It's about picking the right song selection, get out on tour, and if I have some advice for them, find a big act to open for. Take the momentum of this show and dive into it, but do what you have in your heart and do what you want to do, which he will. I mean, he's only him. He can't do anything else. The beauty of, of all of the story and his father and all of it coming together, it felt like he was healing. He was doing his father justice in that moment. It was like a destiny fulfilled. After winning American Idol, Ian's single, I'll Be Seeing You, reached number one on the iTunes charts. I really love this song because it talks about loss. When my dad passed away, we will be like driving and stuff. And everything that he used to do, we'll point at, oh, it's dad. Uh, that's what dad loved. we go and drive past his dialysis place, Oh, look, his dad. You know, we always do that. Find out, oh, look, his dad, or um, just like places you love to eat. Oh, you go to dad's spot. And that's what uh, that's what the song is kind of about. Everywhere you go, you're gonna remind, it's gonna remind you of someone that you lost.
worked hard to be where he's at. You know, we've been there at family gatherings, weddings, funerals, and he's sung at all of it. And to see the world just receive him for who he is and his authenticity. And the love that he brings to his music, the storytelling that he tells, it's very um, full circle for us as a family. To my family out in Hawaii, yes, I love you guys for voting. The joy of winning American Idol coming out. It's because I don't have to worry anymore, you know what I mean? I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about um, losing friends because, like, they're always going to be there. Like, I overthought it. Like, I was overthinking. Like, they're always going to be there. For our people in Hawaii, I mean, we are all one family. So, you know, when one daughter succeeds and is out there making making um, our culture known and making our people proud, we all win. My goal for the future is just to eventually, like, you know, get a house and go for later and just, you know, go back and forth because I love, love I love Seattle now. But no matter where he is, I am the American Idol. He'll always have that playful spirit. That is Ian Tongi. I want to say I love you guys and thanks for coming out and supporting. Yes, sir. We're ready for life, though. We're ready, ready for life. Yes, sir. No show. Each shout out to all my, I just spit on the mic. Great. Shout out to all my family out at home, all my friends. Yes, sir. Yay. From all of us here at KITV4, congratulations, Ian. I also want to thank the Tongi family for letting me tag along with them from Hawaii to Seattle to Hollywood, all to learn about Ian's American Idol journey. Aloha. See you.